This week I have returned to one of my piston horns. This is the last piston horn in my collection. And so far we've had a couple by Rao and a couple by Boozy. This one is actually by um, Hawks and Son. Part of the reason I've got a fair few piston horns is that these were the type of horns played here in the UK up until the mid 20th century. So it's not that uncommon to still find them lurking about. And another reason I've chosen to play a piece on the piston horn this week is that tomorrow marks a very significant anniversary. Tomorrow is Monday the 17th of May 2021 and that's the 100th anniversary of the birth of probably one of the most um, well-known and influential horn players certainly um, to come from the UK. Um, tomorrow is the 100th birthday of Dennis Brain and Dennis Brain so much has been written about him and said about him that I, I really have very little to add other than part of the reason I was keen to play something on the piston horn was that the work of Dennis Brain um, and the choices he made were very instrumental I think in British horn playing going from this earlier design of piston horn to the German rotary design so Dennis Brain famously at the beginning of his life he was playing a lot of row instruments sometimes they were natural horns where the valve blocks had been added and then he started to play German rotary instruments so that's another reason for me choosing a piston horn this week. And this particular one, as I say, this is Hawks and Son, um, and you've got here Excelsior Sonorous Class. Um, right next to the bell garland here is a number, uh, 24174, which I understand dates it as being around about 1908. And there's lots of nice little things about these instruments. They very much are trying to copy a lot of things of the French aesthetic. So these don't look that different to the French piston horns of the period. And there's funny little things like, for example, I always find the slightly brutal H pointe on this stamp with H. I'm certain they're trying to somehow em emulate the Rao pointe but the Rao ones are much more elegant. And there's other nice things. This instrument comes with a selection of crooks. And of course, when I change the crook of the instrument, I change the overall length of the instrument. And then when I'm putting down the valves, I also have to change the slides on each valve because otherwise the valves are not going to make the same mathematical alteration to the overall length of the instrument. So we have the tone, the semitone and the tone and a half. And what Hawks has done is we've got these little markings, engraved markings on the valve slides. So it shows me where I need to put it for A, A flat, G, F and E flat. So I can change it accordingly to which crook I'm playing. It's a nice horn. Um, so having chosen a British piston horn to mark Dennis Brain's 100th birthday tomorrow, um, I've chosen a piece by a composer um, who this year we're marking the 100th anniversary of his death, so Camille Saint-Saëns. This isn't the first Camille Saint-Saëns piece I've played in this series. Um, this is not an original piece for horn and piano. It's a transcription by a slightly shadowy figure, A. Sam. I think a French composer, maybe horn player, who transcribed this very famous cello solo this is a transcription of The Swan from Carnival of the Animals for corps chromatique, so chromatic vowel form, uh, French style from the early 20th century. Um, so, Hawks and Son, Piston Horn from London from 1908, a transcription from the early part of the 20th century of Camille Saint-Saëns' The Swan for horn and piano, marking both Dennis Brain's 100th birthday tomorrow and Camille Saint-Saëns' anniversary, 100th anniversary of his death later this year. Um, if you're enjoying all these horn videos and bits and pieces about the history of our instrument and music in general, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow on the social media where I'll be keeping these series up to date.